What's up guys? Justin here with the renderingessentials.com back with another Lumion tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the exterior lighting settings and how you can adjust them to make things look more realistic, to have more contrast between your shadows and your lighted areas and things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the Lumion example models that's contained inside of Lumion. So in order to get to that, you're going to open up Lumion and you're just going to go into the examples section. And I haven't really used this garden example very much, so we're going to go ahead and use that one and kind of take a look at what we can do with the shadows and the lightings and things like that. So to start off, let's go ahead and click on garden and load our example scene. And so what I want to start off doing is I want to start off by looking at how you can adjust some of the lighting settings inside of build mode. So now note that when you do this inside of build mode, this isn't actually affecting what goes into your actual photo that's rendered. This is more of like a preview mode for your lighting. So to start off, you can adjust the way that the lighting works inside of build mode by going into your weather settings and you can adjust basically the sun location. And so the sun location, you can really adjust three different things inside of build mode. You can affect the direction that the sun is shining from, which um, also affects the direction that the shadows go. Um, so this is as if the sun was actually moving around in the background. You can see how as I adjust this, those shadows are adjusting in real time as well. So you can also adjust the sun height. So you can see how as I move the sun down, I get more shadow across my scene. As I move the sun up, I get less shadow. So, and you can kind of think about this like you would think about how the sun works during the day, which is when your sun is super high and it's shining straight down, your shadows get cast kind of straight down below different objects. So like if I look at this bush, for example, right now the sun is shining straight down and it's being blocked straight down like this. But if the sun was coming off from the side, you can see how now, since the rays are coming in from the side, your shadows are a lot further out from your objects because your sun is lower. And so you can adjust the way that sun works. And notice when you bring this down here, your lighting goes completely dark, so it becomes a nighttime scene. So um, you can use this to kind of preview your lighting and shadows. Then the other thing you can do is you can also adjust how bright the sun is um, in here, which then affects basically the strength of the contrast between your lights and your darks. So you can see how when I make this lighter, the areas where the sun is shining actually show up as lighter as well, while the shadows stay dark. You'll notice if I turn this down, then uh, you don't get that same thing. You don't really get any shadows because your sun isn't much brighter than your shadow areas. But note that none of these settings are really going to affect what happens inside of your actual rendering itself because you set the, that up in your settings inside of photo mode. So let's go into photo mode and take a look at a couple of our different options for adjusting the lighting inside of your renderings. And so what I want to do in this situation is I want to go ahead and I want to create a new view over here in slot number nine. And so we're going to use this to kind of take a look at the lighting settings that you can adjust in order to make your rendering look different ways. So to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my camera so I can kind of see um, basically so I've got the thirds of this so that this little lower left hand third is right in the middle of this um, this whatever this little structure is. It's almost like a like a shrine or something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, but this way you can see the skies as well so you can kind of see what the different lighting settings are doing. And so in Lumion 9, let, let's go ahead and start off by loading a preset. So we're just going to go into our style presets and for this one I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the daytime preset. And what that's going to do is that's going to load in a bunch of different effects into your stack over here. So you can see how there's a bunch of different effects in here. And there's really two different ways in Lumion 9 that you create lighting inside of your renderings. So the first method is you set up your sun and your sky and your clouds. So this allows you to customize where the sun is, what the height is, and what your sky looks like. So the other way, and we're going to look at both of these, is going to be to load in a real sky. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at our sun and sky and clouds effects first. So the way that this effect works is when you load it in, if you double click on it or single click on it, you can adjust the sun height and the sun heading 
in the same way that we could inside of build mode. So this is very similar to the way that we did this inside of build mode. And actually you're gonna notice if you adjust your sun height to a certain height and then move it around, you can actually see the sun sphere in the background. So this is actually bringing in a real sun um, or simulating a real sun inside of your rendering. So you can see how your shadows update dynamically when you do this. And uh, you can also adjust the brightness just like we could inside of build mode. My understanding was that the sun disk size should affect how uh, how uh, soft the shadows are in here. It doesn't really seem to do that, so I'm not really 100% sure on that one. I haven't been doing much with that setting. But in this method, what you do is you combine your sun with your sky and your clouds. And so with this one, you actually adjust your low and high clouds um, with their position and things like that in order to simulate a sky effect. And the reason we're talking about the sky and clouds inside of a video about lighting is because with this combination of settings, you can actually adjust the way the sun shines on your model, but also the brightness of your sky itself. So there's three settings in here for adjusting the brightness. There's a setting for adjusting the brightness of your clouds. And you can see how as I adjust this to the right, my clouds get bigger or brighter or darker. So that allows you to adjust how bright those clouds are. You can also adjust how bright your sky is behind those clouds. And you can see how the lower I do this, or the lower I drag this, the more contrast you get between your clouds and your sky. But you do have to be a little bit careful about this because if you drag this too far to the left, your, your uh, sky gets really kind of dark and kind of desaturated and it doesn't look very good. So you kind of want to keep that in this middle range. You also don't want it to be too bright. You can see how when I make this too bright, it's adjusting the light that's being cast in the scene, but you can't really see your clouds very well. So usually I keep this kind of in the middle range. And then the last setting allows allows you to adjust the overall brightness of your sky and your clouds together. So you can see how this allows you to adjust your overall lighting so that you can light your scene and also set up your clouds to try to get them to match the lighting that's being brought in by that sun. So that's one way to light your model. The other way that we light our model, and this got brought in in Lumion 9, is to use the real sky effects instead. So instead of using the sky and cloud effects, what you do is you go into your effect settings, or your effects, and you go into weather and climate, and you add a real sky. And so what you're gonna notice is when you click on real sky, what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring in a background image with lighting information associated with it. So you can see how as I rotate this uh, this background image, the shadows adjust accordingly. So basically what these images are is they are background images with, with information about the lighting that comes off of the sun. So the nice thing about these is they're really kind of synced up um, between the image and how bright it is and the light that's being cast in here, meaning that you don't have to come in here and adjust your sky and your sunlight settings separately. You can adjust them together by adjusting this real sky. And if I go back, one thing you're gonna notice is as soon as I bring in a real sky, you can see how the sky and clouds effect get this little um, this little circle with a line through it that says effect is blocked by another effect. What that means is because we have a real sky in here, you can't adjust your sky and clouds because those are being replaced by the actual HDRI image. In addition, you can try to adjust your sun settings, but nothing actually changes because that's being blocked by the HDRI image, the real sky image as well. So the downside to that is you lose a little bit of custom customization. The upside is these are really realistic. And so you can click across these different skies in order to load different lighting settings. So you can see how um, my lighting really matches up with my sky in this situation and allows you to create a really realistic image. And so you'll notice that there's a couple sliders down here as well where you can adjust the brightness of your real sky image using this slider, you can also adjust the overall brightness in here as well. And honestly, between the two of these, they don't really seem to create that different of an effect. I mean, one thing about the overall brightness is it kind of seems to adjust the darkness of the shadows or change the darkness of the shadows a little bit more while your brightness setting, that seems to brighten up everything. So you can adjust both of these sliders to adjust the way that that looks as well. And so you can get different 
kinds of shadows by looking at these images, these real sky images, and figuring out how high up in the sky the sun is in each one of them. So you can see where the bright part is. That's going to be the brightness, or that's going to be the location of your lighting. So you can see how if you pick a higher light like this one, your shadows aren't going to travel quite as far. They're going to be more straight up and down as if the sun was straight up and down in the sky. Or if you were to select like one of the morning or one of the evening presets, you're going to see that a lot of your lighting is going to get blocked by your trees. So you just have to be kind of careful to pick a real sky that makes sense in the context of what you're trying to do. And so I think for the purpose of this image, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to select maybe one of these cloudy HDRIs, maybe like, maybe not that one. That one's a little darker than I want. Maybe something like this one right here. So we're just going to adjust that so that our shadows are kind of sh shining across our scene kind of like this and I may adjust that before my final rendering but the other thing I want to look at when I do this is I want to look at a couple settings that you can adjust across either one of these methods so there are a couple more settings that adjust the overall brightness of your image so the first is going to be your exposure and so what the exposure is going to do is it's going to be kind of like adjusting the exposure on a camera where the longer you expose film to light the lighter the image is going to be so you can see how in this case you can adjust your exposure up and this gets a little bit more washed out overall if you adjust it down your image is going to be darker overall and generally speaking you're probably going to use this more in a, an interior image than an exterior image but you can definitely use this to adjust um, how bright your overall image is going to be and that works whether you're using a real sky or if you're using the sun and clouds effect so the other setting I want to look at is the shadow effect. So the shadow effect also allows you to adjust um, how bright and dark these shadows are inside of your rendering. So you can see how there's an option in here for brightness. Now if I adjust the brightness up, you can see how all of a sudden my overall brightness is much, much higher. Um, mostly because what we're doing is we're adjusting any area where the shadows are cast so that the shadow isn't quite as dark. So if I drag that to the right, you can see how you don't get nearly as much shadow. If you drag that to the left, that means that the shadows are going to have a lot more contrast and it's going to be a lot darker in the shadow areas. And one thing to note about this is the further you drag this to the left, the less color you get inside of your shadow areas. So if you watch these, for example, the greens right here, if I drag this all the way to the left, you can see how I'm getting less green color and more dark. Or if I drag that all the way to the right, I get a lot of color, but I don't get a lot of darkness in my actual shadow itself. And so you can use this to kind of customize the way that your exterior scenes look inside of Lumion. And so in this case, probably what I would do is I would just click on the button for store camera once I have this the way that I want it. And then I would just go in and I would render my photo. And so when I render this, you can see how that's going to come in here and that's going to create a render using the settings that I've set up in here. So that's kind of an overview of how you can use the exterior lighting settings to light a rendering inside of Lumion. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know about all this? Do you have any tips and tricks for exterior lighting? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.